Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part one of this presentation, Thunderbolts colleague Garrett Hill introduced his experimental research into the electrical scarring of planets and moons. Within a growing community of investigators, a conceptual foundation has been laid for an entirely new understanding of planetary geology. Electrical processes have been shown to routinely reproduce almost every familiar geological feature. Today, Garrett Hill continues his discussion of his research. We begin with an examination of the electrical significance of the scalloped edged features seen on many planetary bodies. It seemed as though that the scalloped edges would occur more prominently where there was uh, a larger concentration of particulate matter in a given zone and plasma filaments would, would strike at that particular region and, and sort of ex excavate material. When it was relatively small amount of material, it didn't seem like it would, it would produce it as prominently as, as it does with more material. Different types of scallops, different distances in between scallop lines or sort of successions of scallops from a discharge that would strike multiple times as it was traveling past a certain region of the acrylic plate. It seemed like there was ex just simply excavation going on whenever a, a discharge would happen in that particular region. And it was pretty interesting. There was a lot more photos of different scallops and different looking than what these two experiments show. But it's clear that it's just a really common part of this type of experimentation is, is the scalloped edge. In recent years, the electrical nature of dust devils on our own Earth and the planet Mars has become increasingly evident to investigating scientists. Garrett explains the results of his attempts to reproduce dust devil features in laboratory experiments. When the conductor that I'm carrying in my hand gets in close proximity to the center of the mound, you would see these lateral discharges between the center of the mound and the outer perimeter of the uh, insulator. And, and so these strikes, you know, these plasma arc strikes. And in conjunction with that, you would see the development of these radial patterns as well, which were very, pretty much perpendicular for the most part to the lateral discharges. And so depending on the concentration of the particulate matter in that particular region, you would get these sort of diffuse marks that would be carved out of the particulate matter on the surface of that plate. And, and, and I inverted it. I was looking at the photos of these trails and I was like, wow, that looks very similar to the dust devil tracks, but the colors are, are wrong, right? On the surface of Mars, you have, you have dark regions that outline the tracks. Well, here it was the light regions because it was, sort, it was oxidizing and moving the material out of the way and creating these trails. The planet Venus is remarkable for its surface that is nearly blanketed with filamentary scars known in electrical terms as Lichtenberg figures. Garrett notes how perfectly these features are reproduced through electrical discharges. Looked at this experiment in the above slides, the perpendicular discharge patterns. You have radial and lateral distribution of, of these paths carved out of the soot mound and into the surface of the acrylic. We see a lot of that on the surface of Venus while it's also adhering to sort of a fluid dynamic pattern, whether it's sort of a radial distribution of these patterns around large craters or in different regions of the planet's surface, it's littered throughout the surface of, of Venus. And I'm not necessarily saying that these patterns look exactly like the over the region patterns, but the fact that there are perpendicular discharges happening, I find really interesting. You know, when you look at those videos of those experiments with the Tesla coil, the acrylic plate, and the soot mound, you'll see that before I bring the conductor up close enough for a discharge to happen, you see the radial patterns develop first and foremost, and then discharges start happening which are perpendicular to those patterns. And so you, you get this perpendicular relationship and distribution of, of these electrical discharges, which may in a large part be able to explain a lot of these patterns that, that, that interfere with each other. 
Planetary scientists believe the surface of Venus has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system, and they think that volcanism played a major part in shaping the planet's surface. But like the towering Olympus Mons on Mars, many of these features may not be volcanoes at all, but the scars left by powerful electrical discharges. I uh, just came across this photo as I was archiving the different large features on Venus and came across a color image and I was like, okay, that's awesome. But then when I saw the, the, the black and white image, I was like, okay, this helps relate the color and removes the, the interference of the color in trying to find similarities in the pattern. And so experiment two, as you'll see in the video, has both radial and lateral distribution of filaments that are scarring the surface of that plate and they seem to sort of carve out thicker regions and really distinct scalloped edge of, of, the, of the thicker regions of the soot or the particular matter on the plate, which you can see in the darker regions surrounding that volcano. It's really hard edge. And so I can appreciate that hard edge correlation to some of these photos because that can allude to deeper regions or give a depth perception as if there was sort of a raise or a depression from the thicker region to the region right next to that on the other side of that hard edge where it's where there's a depression or no particular matter at all in that experiment. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.